Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to my channel. I am back with another Dollar Tree Christmas DIY video, so let's get started. Okay, so for our first DIY, you're gonna need two of these little Dollar Tree boxes, any kind. It doesn't matter if it has a flower, a heart, I think some have stars, um, just two. And you're gonna start by taking them apart, so like pulling the little drawer out. And you're gonna use, I guess, the box of the drawer and then one drawer. So two big, one small. And then I just started by taking um, some Waverly chalk paint. You guys can do whatever color you want. And um, just giving them an even coat. Again, you guys know I like to use like, I like a little bit of that wood showing through. And I didn't worry about the backs because you're not gonna see those. So while those were drying, I'm taking this metal um, joy. This is from the Dollar Tree. They come in like a pack of three and I want them to be separate. So I start by going in where I can, like the cursive is and I just start cutting them. So they look like they're individual words. And um, once the boxes were dry, I'm going in with my little chippy brush and some antique Waverly wax. And I'm just giving, like just dressing these, making these look rustic, farmhouse. You guys know the, the deal. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Did y'all see my paintbrush fly? <laughs> okay, so then you're gonna need two packs of these bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree. You're gonna wanna use the two of the bigger ones and one of the smaller ones. Then once all your boxes are dry, you're going to start by hot gluing them, making sure that the smaller box is flush on the front side with the bigger boxes. So you don't wanna, you don't, I mean, you can kind of see, I'm making sure that it's evenly and on the front, it looks like they were made this way. So you guys, if you have worked with these trees before, you know that the bottom is like a white snowy clump and it kind of makes them stand up, if that makes sense. Um, and I felt like the snow on top of the rustic boxes, it, there, it stood out. So I took my chippy brush and I just went in and I just stressed those um, as well. And then I started hot gluing them down. Okay, so for the front of the boxes, I didn't realize this when I had this brilliant idea in my brain, but the J in the Joy is too big for that box. So I kind of measured it out and I cut the metal again. And at first I was gonna still use that little, I don't know what it would be, the cursive of the J, but I felt like, I didn't feel like you could, you could tell that I had cut it and I was, you would have been able to notice. So I just decided not to do that. And I just went with like a straight little J. <laughs> and then I started hot gluing those in the center of the boxes. So I was going to use jute for this part, but I felt like the jute was too thick, <laughs> if that is even a thing. But I have this hemp cord that I got from Walmart, I believe. Um, and it, it's more, it's thinner than jute, 
Um, and I just started making three little bows and then I started hot gluing those on the top of the trees. Now for the smaller one, I did make a little smaller bow um, because I wanted it to be obvious that that is smaller if it's not already obvious. <laughs> and um, this DIY is complete and I think this is so cute. So you guys have to let me know what you think. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far and today's video is part of the Friend Friday Hop created by Heidi Sumble and we are also doing a huge giveaway. It's $375 Amazon gift card which would be amazing right before Christmas. All you have to do is in the description box, there is a link to the next person in the hop and you hop all over to all the other channels, leaving a comment and that will um, enter you into the giveaway. So let's get back into the video. Okay, so moving on to our second DIY. Um, you guys have seen me use these in previous videos. If you've been with me, if you haven't, this is just a box sign. I got this back at Easter, but Dollar Tree does have them for almost every season. And I just removed as much as the paper as I could and I gave it a good coat of ivory Waverly chalk paint. And if you guys have been with me for a while, you guys know how much I love Dollar Tree buttons. I think they're so cute and they're all different. So I just started by going through and picking out greens, reds, burgundies, hunter greens, just any color. And then I started with littler ones that were different colors. So at first I tried to lay this out and get a shape, but I was like, girl, just go for it. So I laid a bead of hot glue and I just start laying the buttons down. And I, my goal is to make, not my goal, the, the thing of this project is to make it look like a Christmas tree. So you're gonna just wanna start putting them on there. You know, there's really no rhyme or reason. I just kind of got the shape at first and then I go back in and kind of add a little bit more to the triangle shape. So here's a little bit further along. Once I got the shape, oh my gosh, my dogs are going crazy. I think Amazon is out for it. <laughs> They're probably like, oh, this house again. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so um, once I got um, the shape, I, like I said, I went back in and I started making it more defined that it's a triangle. Once I did that, I took some of my sticks that are free and I made a little trunk for our Christmas tree and I hot glued those down. And then I wanted to make a bow for this. So I took some burlap ribbon, some red and white burlap ribbon. It's not really white, but, and then some raffia and I lay them in an X formation. And if you guys have been here for a while, you have seen me make this bow a million times. And I just take some jute and tie that all together and set that to the side. Then I'm going in with my chippy brush and some anti Waverly wax. And I realized, oh, I forgot to glue that button down, but I'm just distressing this. Don't be afraid to be heavy handed with your distressing. You can always go back in with sandpaper and sand that down, tone it down. So I always go in crazy, not crazy, but I, I like a lot of distressing. And then I like to go back in and, you know, tone it down just a little bit and make it blend in with the paint. And then I'm just hot gluing my bow to the top. And um, I did dovetail the burlap ribbon. Um, so if you don't know how to do that, you fold your ribbon in half and you cut at a diagonal angle. Um, if you guys ever have any questions, you guys know you can ask. I am all for helping people out. And then just to go with the theme, I added a little red button in the middle of this bow. And this little guy is complete and I love this, you guys. If you have been here, you know I love buttons and I think this is absolutely adorable. So let me know which one is your favorite. Okay, you guys, so we are getting closer to Christmas and I just wanted to let all my subscribers know 
Um, we are taking our kids to the happiest place on earth for Christmas. This year has been super tough. So I do want to just take that time and spend that time with my family. Um, so I will be posting one more video after this one on December 16th. And then I'm just going to take a break and spend some time with my family over the holidays. And then after Christmas, I will be back to posting videos. I also want to hear what you guys want to see after the new year. So if you guys have any ideas, feel free to leave a comment. If you are new here, I hope that you stick around and hit that subscribe button, like, and share this video, and let's get back into crafting. Okay, so for this last DIY, you're gonna need a pool noodle, any kind of pool noodle, they're all the same, and you're gonna wanna cut it into three sections. I just used a regular kitchen knife for this, and it worked perfect. You're gonna do one short, one medium, and one tall. Once they're cut, you're gonna wanna take, I used a cake spatula and some spackling. And I just took it and kind of coated it like I was icing a cake. Um, and I wanted the rough edges. Then I moved upstairs and once these dry, um, the spackling dried white, which I wanted to do anyway, that was my purpose because I, that covered a lot of the green. Um, but then I'm going back in with some white wax Waverly paint. I actually bought this on accident, but the color came out perfect. So I, I loved it. <laughs> so you're just going to, you're just going to want to go in and cover any spots that the green was still showing, but you do want to give it a good even coat because you don't want one side completely white and one side a little bit cream, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not sure where the footage went of me distressing this, but I'm still doing it. You can kind of see the technique that I'm using. I went in with the Elephant Waverly Chalk Paint first, and I just dry brushed it. So where we spackled those the like ridges and stuff that are raised, those will take to the paint a little more than the flatter parts. So um, once I got enough of the Elephant Chalk Paint, I went in with the Waverly Wax, and then these noodles were used as swords in my house. They weren't supposed to be, um, but they already had like dents and stuff in them. So if you are buying like a brand new noodle, I would take, you know, like a spoon or something round and kind of just put little holes, not holes, but little indentions because it gives it character. Um, once that was dry, I took some jute and I tied it off around the back to hold them all together. And then I wrapped it like five or six times and then I tied that off in the back. Then I'm taking these picks from Dollar Tree and I just take one and I cut it because it was too long. So I got maybe, I don't even know. I went up to where I thought it would look like it would look okay against the smaller noodle. And then I took this other pick and that one had little red berries on it. And I pulled that one off, cut it. Um, if you're seeing me cut wire with scissors, just close your eyes. <laughs> my daughter likes to come in my craft room and take things. So I have no idea where my snips are anyways. So, um, to get these on, once you have put the jute on, I found it easiest to go in through the side because that's where it's loose. And then I slid the pick over and then I did the same thing with the berries. Then once I got them all in place, I went in and I hot glued everything. And then I wanted to add some pine cones. So I added two, I put one kind of in the middle of the berries and one going the other way. So 
So then I'm just going back in with my chippy brush and some antique Waverly wax and I'm just touching up areas where I felt like I could still kind of see a little bit of green and on top of the noodles and um, yeah, there, I mean, honestly, this is kind of just what I did the whole time. I just where I thought things should have been darker um, because I wanted them to look like real logs. I wanted them to look like I went out in my backyard, even though I have no trees and I chopped these bad boys down. <laughs> so and then once that's done, so for one of the um, ideas I had for this, um, I put brown craft paper in the bottom because I thought these would be cute with like tapered candles in them because I'm a sucker for tapered candles. Um, you could also do like little tree light, like tea lights um, and make the holes bigger and put those at the top. But I put the paper in there to keep the candles from falling down because this hole was a little too big. But I love how this turned out out um i obviously would not recommend lighting these if you do want to light them you know get some fake ones but and then my other idea was um using it as like a vase so i put some pompous grass in it and i love this so you guys let me know which one is your favorite be sure to hop over to the next person and i'll see you next time